Hello guys, um, hope you're all doing well. Um, it's been a couple of weeks now since um, since we've all been in isolation and I just thought I'd um, start doing some weekly videos for you guys um, just to take you through a workout. Um, uh, what I want you to do is do this as if you're doing it with me. I'll do it at the same time. The workouts will last between 20 minutes and half an hour and they will be on slightly different things. Uh, today we're going to do some core workouts. So um, mainly for people who uh, may have a few back issues. Um, we're going to start with some stretching and do some core work and activation. Okay, so this is something that once we do, there's no reason why you can't repeat this workout once a week, every week. Um, each week I'll add another one, maybe even a couple a week. And hopefully you can build a weekly routine out of this. Okay, so um, we're going to start with a little bit of stretching, like I said. So I hope you can see me there. Sometimes you might lose my head, um, but let's see how this goes. Okay, so we're going to do this together. The first stretch we're going to do is a hip flexor stretch. So a stretch for a muscle right here. Okay, and what this muscle does is, in effect, is just bring the leg up like that. Okay, and if, if you're a desk bound worker, often this muscle gets uh, particularly tight. Um, and can cause some stiffness in the hip and can contribute to uh, potentially down the line um, back, back problems. So uh, let's start with the hip flexor stretch. I'll talk you through it. I'll do it with you. We'll hold it for roughly uh, 15 to 20 seconds per side, and then we'll change the exercise, which again, I'll talk you through one at a time. So let's get into position, guys. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna stand, or you're gonna um, kneel down with your knees aligned with your hips, so don't push your bum back. Keep in that position, and then what we're going to do, is you're just going to bring that foot in front of you like so. Okay, so you should have roughly a 90 degree angle. Now you've probably seen people do this stretch um, at gyms, various other places, and they bring their body right down to feel the stretch. Yes, you will be pulling at your hip a little bit, but um, you also put a lot of strain on your back um, doing it like that. So what I like to get people to do is start in that 90 to um, that hip and knee alignment uh, position, 90 degree angle on the knees there and there, and before you do anything, you're just gonna get a slight tuck of the pelvis here to that motion, okay? Once you've got that motion, you just lift your chest up. So if I just maneuver the screen a little bit here, then you can see what I mean with the uh, upper body, okay? So from here, you get that pelvic tuck, so you tuck your bum under, and you lift up your chest like so. Then you should be feeling a pull here. If you don't, all you need to do at that point is travel forward maintaining that tuck of the pelvis. Um, what you'll find is you won't be able to travel that far and you'll feel quite a big pull in your hip there. To increase that further, just bring this arm up. Imagine someone's grabbing onto your wrist and pulling you up towards the ceiling. Let's hold that position there, guys, for about 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, good. Don't bring your arm down. I'll turn around the other way and we're going to do the other leg. Okay, so you're going to bring the left leg in front of you this time. And again, you're looking for that tuck of the pelvis there. Lift up your chest and raise one arm in the air like so. Again, imagine someone's grabbing your wrist and pulling you towards the ceiling. If you want to increase the stretch, just travel forward slightly with your body, keeping that tuck. We don't want that to happen. We want to stay in here. Let's hold that for another 10 seconds there, guys. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And gently come back. So that's your hip flexor stretch there, guys. So I'm just gonna maneuver the screen again so you can see, see me then. The next stretch we're gonna do is for our um, inner thigh here, guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go on all fours, and then we're gonna bring one leg out like so and you're just gonna slide it out slightly, okay? Until you feel a pull on your inner thigh, and then just push your bum back a little bit as well. Just put this up so you can see all of me. Okay. Just that position, just there, and hold. I'm gonna hold that for 15. You should be feeling the stretch right in here. Okay, and again, we don't wanna to be too far forward. We wanna push our bum back slightly. And if you want to increase the stretch, just gently, like I'm doing, push the foot out. Straight leg. Three, two, one. Good. Go back to this position, and we're going to go to the other side. 
so step out, just gently slide out, push your bum back. I can feel the pull of my inner thigh right now. So we're just gonna hold that. Five more seconds, four, three, two, one. Brilliant. Okay, the last stretch for the lower body is gonna be one for the hips just here. So you've got your glute muscle, glute medius muscle that wraps around there. Also a muscle that's a little bit deeper called your piriformis. If you train with us, you've probably heard us mention that a few times. Um, can contribute to some sciatic pain and discomfort, some back pain if, if it's um, overly tight, okay? So this is a stretch for it. So you get yourself into this position here. So you've got a nice degree angle there. I'll show you from the side and a 90 degree angle just in here. Okay guys, yes it is short weather, sort of. Um, from that position, this hand goes as close to your body as you can. And what I get people to do is really push down into the ground with the arm. So you push down into the ground and then just gently travel forward with your chest, not allowing your back to curve like so. You keep your chest up and you'll get a little pull just in there, maybe just under your leg, just here, and hip and bum visit, um, area. You might get a little cramp in here on the right hand side or the, hand, the side that you're not stretching. That's just the side of your body contracting a little bit. It's nothing to worry about. Keep your chest proud. Hold for a further five, four, three, two, one. Good. I'm gonna change sides there. Let me just adjust again there, guys, just so you can see me as well. I'm not constantly cutting my own head off. So again, we're gonna get in that position. This side's a little stiffer for myself. Again, if you, if you find that one side is a quite a lot stiffer, it might be worth doubling up on that side um, when you do the stretch every day. So again, bring the hand nice and close to you, push it into the ground and lift your chest like you're pushing yourself away, the ground away from you. And then you travel forward. As you can probably see, I'm, I'm not able to travel quite as far on this side. It's just a little stiffer, completely normal. Or completely typical, I should say, for that to be the case. Now we've got just another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna move on to some upper quarter mobility exercises and stretches. We'll start with the next stretch. Okay, so from here, what I want you to do, lift your chest up, and just gently tilt your head to one side. With this arm, the, the arm that you've um, pulled your head away from, just reach it away from you. Creep it towards on the ground if you're kneeling or if you're stood, push down into the ground. Then with this arm, you're just gonna place it on the side of your head and just hold that stretch just there. What should happen is the weight of this arm should um, be enough to feel a stretch down your neck. Don't go pulling at your neck too hard. If you want to increase the stretch, use this side. Pull the shoulder down. Four, three, two, one. Gently come out of the stretch. Hope you like my top birthday present. If you're a Sons of Anarchy fan, this is for you. Tilt your head the other way, guys. Use this arm again to walk away from your body and place your other arm on the side of your head and hold. Again, if you want to increase the stretch, bring the shoulder down. Don't pull at your neck too hard with your left arm. Four, three, two, one. Again, you're gently coming out of the stretch. And then we're going to go to look towards our right pocket. Okay, guys, so from here, look down towards your right pocket. Tuck your chin in. Place this hand on the back of your head this time, the back and the left, back left of your head if you're looking towards your right hand side. With this arm again, you're pulling it down towards the floor and then really tuck your chin in. That should really emphasize the stretch. This time it should be down the back of your neck just here. And just hold again. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Gently release. Okay. This time we're going to look to the left pocket, okay? So we'll do it all together. We'll look down towards our left pocket. Tuck your chin in. Place your left arm on the back right of your head. 
Pull your right arm to shoulder towards the ground and tuck your chin in. And we're going to just hold for a further 10 seconds here. Turn and slowly release. Final neck stretch here, guys. We're going to take your right hand. And you're going to put your fingers just above your collarbone, just here. So it's on your neck, basically, but touching the top of your collarbone. Then take the other arm and put it on top of those fingers and pull down at your neck until you feel the stretch across your neck just here. So now it should be beneath your collarbone. So you start above your collarbone, you pull down beneath, do that with me. And then once you're there, you tilt your head away from it as if you're looking up and away. And then you push your jaw forward. You should get a stretch all the way up here, maybe up into your ear. This is a big, it's quite a long muscle and it can, if your head presents forward, if you're someone who sits at a desk all day or drives all day, this muscle can get particularly tight, causing stiffness, discomfort, potentially. Three, two, one, and again, gently release. Always come out of these nice and gently, please, everybody. And now again, left arm, two fingers on top of your collarbone, right arm on top of those fingers, and pull down at your neck. Once you're in that position, tilt away with me. Push your jaw forward, I'll give you all a couple of seconds to get into position. And then we're gonna go for five, four, three, two, one. Brilliant, just come out of the stretch. Those are the neck stretches there guys. So we've done hips, we've done neck. We're gonna do a bit of mid back mobilization. We're gonna do a uh, cat camel or a cat cow. So I'm just gonna adjust this again guys so you can see me just a little bit. So we're going to go into all fours here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer for this, and we're going to do it for 30 seconds, okay guys? We're just trying to loosen off our back, get it into a better position. I'll show you the exercise first, and then we'll do it together. So from here, you're going to push your back up while your head tucks, chin tucks in, and then the opposite. As you push your chest towards the ground and up, your head comes up, your bum comes up, and then back into that position there. Okay, obviously don't turn your head. It'll be time to look if you need to. Okay, guys, so get yourselves into position and I'm going to start the timer. Once you're ready, we're going to go in three, two, one, and go. 30 seconds is on the timer. If you lose track of the exercise, just take a peek over to the screen and I'll be doing it with you. Hope you all like my garden. Ignore the hairdressing material on the left hand side there. Maybe I'll do a, um, a different background next time. I've already been told a couple of times to do that. So I'm still figuring all this tech stuff out. And stop there, guys. Bro. Okay, so we're going to move on to some um, strengthening exercises. The first exercise is called a bird dog. If you've trained with me, you probably very likely done this exercise if you follow my uh, social media or my YouTube channel. Um, I, I talk about these types of exercises quite a lot. They're really beneficial for core strength and back health. Okay, so um, I'll tell you what this, must, the, this exercise is for. Okay, firstly, so what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to work the muscles of your back, so your big lat muscle, your spinal erectus, so the muscles that run the length of your spine that keep your back in that position. And um, on the opposite side, so that's when you move your arm. The opposite leg that moves, you should be working your glute and hamstring, um, as well as working your core and obliques. All these muscles are um, of the core and back are designed to wrap around your back and create stability, okay? So um, these exercises are, are just for that, really. We're trying to create as much stability and endurance of those muscles um, as possible, okay? So let me show you the exercise first, and again, we'll do it together, okay? So we're gonna do uh, 10 reps. Um, just keep it nice and simple. Um, I'll talk about progressions in the rest period. So we're gonna start on all fours with straight arms. Hands in line with the shoulders. The first little point is to bring your shoulder blades down and tuck your chin in. Brace your stomach, so tense your core muscles up and point your toes towards you. So don't point them there, point them towards you and keep them on the floor. Now a real good way of doing this on your own to tell if you're not raising your leg and hand too high 
is um, to slide your hands and foot across the floor. So when your right hand moves, your left leg moves. So you slide back, keeping both in contact to the floor until that left leg locks out, okay? So keeping all those points together. With that lockout, then you raise, and as you can see at that point, with the lockout, I feel my glute and hamstring kick in as I raise my leg. That's a little tell to tell me I don't want to go any further. Any further and it's going to be too high and I'm going to be putting too much pressure on my, on my back there. We want the back to work to stabilize, not to move um, the leg and the hip, okay? So in real time, it should look something like this. So shoulders down, chin in, brace, toes towards you, and you're going to slide, lock, raise, back to the ground and back. So you do the opposite on the way, and then you change sides. Lock, raise, touch, and back. Okay, so we're going to do that together. We're going to do 12 reps. We'll both do it at the same time. Get yourselves in position, guys, so on all fours. We'll go through this point by point. Shoulder blades back, chin in, toes towards you, embrace your core. Then we're gonna go right arm slide across the floor while your left leg does. Lock the knee and raise. Once you get to that top range, you're back down and in. So keep in time with me, guys. Now it's your left arm, right leg. Lock, up down, raise that middle point here, just check your shoulders, check your core, go again. Lock, up, down, and back. Slide, lock, up, down, back. Keep it going here. Slide, lock, up, down, and back. This is number six. Keep going guys, if you need a little adjustment in between, you can, so just adjust, bring the shoulders down, brace your core. Four to go here after this one. We're looking for no movement of the, of the spine if you can guys, okay? So you're looking from your head to your hips to be still while your limbs move. Two more, lock your shoulders, chin in, Slide, lock, up, down, and back. Last one, slide, lock, up, down, and back. Really good work there, guys. So it shouldn't be terribly, terribly difficult, but you should feel it. You should feel a little bit in your core, you should feel a little bit in your mid-back, and you should feel as you raise your legs, that your back, your leg or bum and or bum muscle just tightens a little bit. If you're not getting that, you're probably not engaging your core quite enough um, and the lower back is creating a little bit too much movement. So try and correct that next time if that is happening, okay? Repairing this exercise with a side plank. I wanna do the side plank from your um, knees, okay? So I've got an alternative variation to the side plank if you find that your shoulder hurts, okay? So we're gonna hold for 15 seconds per side. What I'm going to get you to do, you're going to go into that position with your knees just in front of you, elbow and, um, elbow and shoulder aligned, lift up your chest and imagine someone's pushing your shoulder blade down like so. Brace your core and then instead of coming up, what you want to do is you want to come forward and up and then take the right knee away from the left and then hold for 15 seconds. Okay, if, you, if you've got a shoulder problem, an alternative is to lie completely on your side and then just raise both legs off the ground like so. You'll work the same muscles. It's not quite as tough, but it's a start and we can, um, we can work on your shoulder um, discomfort another time. I will be releasing some videos with regards to that as well, so keep an eye on them. Uh, so let's go into this together, guys. So again, 15 seconds per side. I'm gonna get you to, I'll get the time and we'll do this all together. So point by point again, guys. So get ready. Elbow on the floor, shoulder in line with elbow. Knees just in front of you and lift up your chest. Brace your core. And then let's bring our hips forward and off the ground and then raise the knee. Okay, now I'm going to start the timer. I should have given you guys enough time to get into position there. Do it from your knees, guys, for now. We can always progress these as the weeks go on. Don't turn your head like I'm, I'm just looking at the, at the timer there. Three, two, one. 
switch sides. Progressions to that one, you can hold for a bit longer. If you repeat this workout yourselves, you can hold for a bit longer. You can um, go into a full side plank from your, from your feet. Um, you can do kind of rest pause intervals. So you can do 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, increasing the reps. Okay, but for now, let's just keep it simple from your knees, 15 seconds. Okay, so point by point, elbow in line with um, shoulder, shoulder comes down, lift your chest, knees just a little in front of you to start with. So you can push your hips through as you come up, take your knee away from the other. And 15 seconds on the hold there. Sorry about the sun. Hopefully you can see me. Three, two, one. And stop there, everybody. Okay, that was round one. We're going to do one more round. Again, progressions to the bird dog, guys. I'll just give you 30 seconds on the rest here. Let me set that up. Progressions to the bird dog. You can add a three to five second, maybe even a 10 second hold per rep at the top of the rep. You can add, um, you can add reps. Um, you can um, create movement like squares. This is something maybe in a future video I'll show you, but if you want to get these um, progressions done early, then I'll tell you about them now. You can, you can do 10 reps per side before changing sides, making it much harder for that one side. Okay, so but we'll keep it simple for today. Let's start with this and then we can, we can progress. I'll uh, maybe turn out a new video every, every three weeks on the same core. Um, like a progression to the same core program, okay? So we're gonna go back into the bird dog, guys, okay? So let's not explain it too much, we've talked through it. Just do it with me again. We're looking for 12 reps. So hands and elbows aligned, shoulders down, chin in. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Point your toes towards you to get into position. A few seconds to get into position, and let's go. So you slide your hand and your foot across the floor, lock the leg before you raise. Feel the tightness in your hamstring and bum before you come back down. Okay, once you feel that tightness in the hamstring and bum, as you raise, that's as high as you go. Don't go any higher, because then you'll create too much movement through the lower back. Brace your core, come up. Good, the bracing of the core, the engagement of the core is really key, because that tells you when to stop raising the leg. Okay, if you don't engage your core, what happens is, is the lower back moves too much, you don't get that contraction from the um, hamstring and glute, which means the hamstring and glute aren't bringing your leg up as, as much as the lower back is moving. This is your seventh rep here if you've kept in time with me. Don't worry if you lose your track a little bit. What's more important is the technique here. So slide across the ground, lock your leg, brace your core and come up, back down, forward to go, raise, down, and back, shoulders down, lock, raise, down, and back. Keep checking guys, keep checking your shoulder position. Are they pushed down towards the back pockets? Is your core engaged? These things are super important, okay? Lock, raise, down, and back. Relax, in time guys, you won't need to do that whole slide across the ground and raise. You'll, you'll find your way and you'll be able to do it just in one smooth movement, okay? But start with that. I find it's a really helpful little way of knowing where your body is, okay? And knowing when to stop raising the arms and legs. So let's go into this side plank here, guys. We're gonna put 15 seconds on the timer. and give you a couple of seconds to get into position with me. Elbow on the floor, knees just in front of your body. Lift up your chest and drive your shoulder blades down. Brace your core, bring your hips up and forward one knee away from the other, and hold. Keep focusing on the shoulders moving down, bracing your core. Like I said, if you've got an issue with your shoulder, three, two, one, you can always do the leg down, raise the leg version. Okay, works the same muscle, muscles, but, uh, just a little bit kinder on the shoulder there, guys. So let's set up again. Elbow in line with shoulder, shoulders back and down. Brace your core, knee just in front of your body, and your hips are going to come through. Knee comes away. I'll set the timer. It's already set by the looks of it. 
So you should be getting the feeling around here, guys, maybe into the hip a little bit and bum, especially if you've got your knee away from the other. Two, one, push your back and down. Okay, well done. Really good work there, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna move on to um, some abdominal work and some mid-back work. Again, we're working the static postural muscles of, um, of the upper back and we're working our abdominals here. Okay, you've probably, again, if you follow my page, you've probably seen me do this one. Um, similar to a, a, a crunch, but um, with a few minor differences, okay? Um, this will be base one. We'll hold it for about 15 seconds. Again, there's, there's various progressions to this. You can hold for longer. Um, you can do multiple sets with short rest intervals. Um, and then we can move on to different exercises after that. But I'll probably show you those ones. So what we're going to do, we're going to lie on our back. One knee bent, one knee straight. Hands to your sides here or under your back. That's, a good, that's quite a good idea because it tells you where your back is. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to get our abdominals to brace and bring us up. So you've got to imagine that these muscles here are pulling your upper body up to that position. Once you get in that position, you should feel your back just about touch onto your hands and then you hold there. And we're going to hold for 15 to 20 seconds, probably 20 for today, and relax. Um, so we'll go through it again in a minute, guys. I just wanted to talk to you about it a little. You should feel your abdominals, not your lower back. If you feel your lower back, you probably move too far up. Um, you will feel your neck muscles, but they are just the muscles of your neck working, okay? So they shouldn't do you any, any, any harm. If they are a real problem, then you can always just gently place your hand on the back of your head to take that pressure away, okay? But I'd prefer it if your hands were here. So let's do that together there, guys. I'll set a timer for 20 seconds this time. This is exercise one. So hands in your lower back there, head on the floor, brace your core, it pulls your body up and hold. I'll start the timer. You should start to feel your stomach working. So at the point where you kind of just about feel it working, that's the point where you stop and hold, okay? If this, the straight leg stays on the floor as well, I forgot to mention that. And don't do what I'm doing, which is keep turning and look at you guys. Like I said, I also feel my neck and stop. I also feel my neck working, but I'm not concerned about it. It's just the muscles in your neck working to hold your head up. Uh, it'll actually in time get a little bit easier as well. So as those muscles strengthen up, it will get a little bit easier there. Okay, so the next exercise is a cobra hold, which is kind of working the opposite muscles of what we've just worked. So they're muscles of the mid back, back of the shoulders. Okay, so um, there's similar moves to this. Um, I think done in, in stuff like yoga and Pilates. However, it, it looks the same, slightly different because what we're trying not to do is to pull up as high as we can from the lower back. We're trying to move our shoulder blades back and down as much as we can without the lower back moving, okay? So what I mean by that is, here's what typically is done, to pull up as high as we can. Nothing wrong with that exercise, we're just not doing it. That's just not what we're doing. It looks the same, but we're working it slightly differently. What we want is to engage your core again, push your hips into the ground, have your hands on the floor like so, Head just off the floor. Now the head position stays there. It doesn't go up any higher. It stays there looking at the ground. We put our shoulder blades back and down, and then we raise our arm and rotate our thumbs. Okay, that's the position there. So I'm gonna give you a second to get into lying on your front. And again, I'll do this with you. We're gonna go for 30 seconds on this one. Okay, so slightly longer than the abdominal hold. So I'll talk you through it point by point. Brace your stomach, push your hips into the ground, hands on the floor, chin in, head just off the floor, and it stays in that position throughout. We move our shoulders back, we move our shoulders down towards our back pockets. Now we raise and rotate our thumbs towards the ceiling. I'll start the timer. And Gary, you should all be in position now. Those points will become hard to hold, but keep remembering what I said. Don't bring your head up too high, otherwise you'll start feeling it in your lower back. Keep your shoulders pulled back, keep your shoulders pulled down, keep your arms straight. You might feel the back of your arms quite a bit, that's because you've got your arms locked. Try not to look forward as well, guys, that's another tendency. Keep your head down, okay? You've got three, two, one, and stop. Well done. Okay. Give you about 30 seconds there, guys, and we're gonna repeat those two exercises one more time. 
and then we're going to move on to the final exercises okay um so progressions to that one like like all of them they're pretty similar in terms of progression you just hold and maybe add 10 seconds each week until you get to a minute um that and then you can do multiple sets so if you can do a minute quite comfortably do a minute take 20 seconds do another minute um, so these are little ways of, of, of progressing uh, the exercises. Same with the abdominal curl up. Okay, so you'll know when you need to progress, it will start to get quite easy for what we've done. When that happens, just start implementing these progressions. Okay, remember once you've, once you've got this video, you, you'll be able to watch it again. It'll be on, on YouTube. So just go back to it, try and do it each week, try and progress it each week until you get the new video posted to you. Okay. Set two of the abdominal curl ups. We're looking for 20 seconds. Let me set my timer again. Okay, I'll give you a second to get into position there, guys. So, one leg straight, one leg bent, both feet on the floor, hands in your lower back, just there, head on the floor. Then we're going to brace abdominals. The tummy is pulling your body up until your back just about feels your hands, and you should feel your tummy working. Timer is now on, hold that position there, guys. Remember, we're not looking to be all the way up here. We're not looking to crunch the abs as hard as we can. We're looking to just to get them to work, to get your back in kind of a neutral position. Your head might be just out of neutral, but that's okay. Is the pigeon. They've been fighting him and another pigeon over a female pigeon. I've been watching them each day. Three, two, one, and stop. They're pretty brutal, the fight, to be honest. Thought about breaking it up, but I was too fascinated with it. The woman flew off in the end as well, so you know, all that fighting for nothing. So we've got the cobra next. Feet on the floor. So I'll give you a second just to get on your front there, guys. Palms down, head just off the floor, and we're going to move our shoulders back. Going to move our shoulders down. Then we're going to raise our arms and rotate. Start the timer. Let's go, guys. Remember, you're trying to rotate your thumbs. You're trying to drive your shoulder blades down. We're not looking to raise the lower back too high. Sorry, the chest too high. Otherwise, you'll work your lower back. Keep holding, guys. Remember those points, your core, pushing your hips down, bringing your shoulders back and down, not allowing your chest to raise too high off the floor. Keep looking down, not up. Nearly there and stop. Well done guys. Okay, we've nearly finished with the session now. We're just going to finish with a little bit of glute activation, okay? So we've got a, that's Neva in the background, my youngest daughter, so she probably wasn't allowed a toy or something. Um, drama queen. So we've got a clam first, again, these are exercises I go through with most of you guys who I train. If I don't train you, just keep an eye on the, on the technique and the teaching points. We'll still do it together, so you'll have a visual aid. Just look over at the screen and you'll see me doing it with you. So this first exercise works glute medius, the muscle on the side of your hip, plays a big role in hip stabilization, and um, in turn will help with uh, lower back stability as well. So an exercise we like to do, especially at the start of someone's exercise session, to get those muscles fired up and ready for the workout, okay? So, you lie on your side, you're going to bring your knees to about here, okay? So kind of your, your feet and your bum are in line. This hand, this is a really important point here, guys, when you do this yourself. If you haven't got a wall to lie your back on, you haven't got no reference to how your hip is moving, if you place this arm quite far in front of you, what that does is it restricts the movement of your hip. What we don't want is this to happen. Too much movement coming from the hip, minimal work coming from the... Um, from the glute medius there, you get too much back movement, okay? So bring your arm forward, and then we're gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down. And at that point there, after we get to about five, you should be starting to feel this muscle working, okay? And when you feel it, think about it, squeeze it, make it work a bit harder. Eight, nine, and then hold at the top there, and now you're just gonna pulse that top range with me. So up, down, up, down. We're gonna do that for 15. This should really start to make the muscle burn. 
don't be surprised if one side is easier to do than the other. This side I find quite, not easy, but much easier than the other side. You should probably see that when I do the other side, I don't get it quite as high. So all these things are quite normal. 14, 15, I actually think that was 16 actually. Let's go over to the other side here, guys, okay? So from here, bring the knees up so your feet and bum are aligned. This arm quite far forward. Try to ignore my children in the background if you can hear them, my apologies. So up to there. As you can see, it's just a little bit lower than the other side, but I'm not rotating my whole hip to um, um, account for the lack of range. I'm just working with what I've got, okay? So let's go, guys. If you haven't already gone, let's start now. Just use me as reference and just do roughly 10. Once you get to 10, we're gonna do those pulses again. Two, one, hold the top and let's pulse. 15 pulses, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Well done. Now we're gonna lie on our back. Let me show you the exercise first again, guys. So this is for your glute max. So that was for your glute medius, muscles on the side of your hip, glute max, muscles at the, at the back of your hip, so your bum muscles, basically. So give me a slight tuck of the pelvis, nothing too aggressive. We don't wanna push, crush the back into the ground, just a tiny little pelvic tilt like so. Squeeze your bum as tight as you can and push your hips up off the floor till you get to about there. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 second hold at the top with a big squeeze of your glutes. Once you've done that, we're gonna do 10 reps down and up. Look at my tempo there, guys. We're trying to go one, two, holding the squeeze, one, two, on the way up. Really focusing on here. We don't want momentum doing it. We want control, control. So the bum muscle does all the work, okay? So let's do that together. So we get a slight tuck of the pelvis. Squeeze your bum muscles. Bring your hips up off the floor and hold. Nine, eight, Seven, really squeeze your bum, really squeeze it. Five, four, three, two, one. And together we're gonna to travel down for one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You should be really squeezing your bum muscles, guys, focusing in on them. Don't just move from A to B. This, these muscles move your hips up, okay? They're the driving force. Activate them, think about them. Five. Six, I think, pretty sure. Seven, eight, two more. Nine, ten. Well done. Okay, we'll take 30 seconds there, guys. The next round and final round should just be a little bit quicker because I won't have to explain quite so much. We'll just get into position and go. But you should have felt your bum muscles on those exercises, guys. At the end of this workout, um, you should feel just a little bit looser, okay, guys? So hips should feel a bit looser, lower back should feel a bit looser, you should just feel a little bit, um, a little bit better, I hope. Um, but I'd love your feedback, so when you do, we do finish, if you've done the workout, just, just give me a shout on how you found it. Not just the exercises, but you know the visuals, the audio. Um, I want to make it better for next time. Uh, and if you like my top as well. Okay, so we're going to start with the clams, guys. So lie on your side, bring your legs up, bum in line with your, with your um, feet, and lie right down. I'll give you a second to get in that position. Then bring your arm to about here, and let's go. So we're going to go one, 10, and then 15 pulses, okay? Two, three. Or don't let your hip rotate. Work with your range there, guys. I, want, I could go further than that, but then my whole pelvis would move, my whole hip would rotate. We don't want that. And then hold at the top here, and let's pulse. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one bring the legs down let's change sides 
Okay, so while you get into position, I'll talk you through the points again. So you can bring your knees up so your bum and your feet are aligned. Lie down with your hand, head comfortable, maybe in your arms like I've got. This arm comes right forward, and then we're gonna go ahead and create that clam together. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and hold on this rep. Pulse, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent, guys. Should have felt glute working, side of your glute working on that one, side of your hip. Let's lie on your back. This is our final exercise today. There and there. Let's get a slight tuck of the pelvis. Squeeze your bum. We're going to do this together. Give you a second and let's go. Hips off the floor. Up and hold. Really squeeze your bum for 10, 9, 8. Keep the pelvis slightly tucked. Keep the glutes squeezed. 4, 3, 2. Now together we're going to travel down for 2. 1, 2. Touch. 1, 2. Up. Try to keep that. Push your bum out as you come down, slight tuck and raise as you come up. Bum out as you come down, slight tuck and raise as you come up, holding the squeeze in the muscles of your bum there, okay? Five, six, seven, three more, eight, nine, ten. Just a couple of points on that one. If you're feeling your lower back, likely you're arching, so get that tuck of the bum, so your back's in neutral. If you feel your hamstrings, you might just be a little bit too far out with your legs and your hamstrings will do too much work, okay? So if either of those were happening, just make those amendments. So tuck under slightly if your lower back felt it, bring your heels closer to your bum if your hamstrings felt it too much. Okay guys, that is us. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, try and do it once a week. The video will be now on my YouTube channel. So just subscribe and check out the videos. There's multiple videos on there. Um, but there will be a new exercise video each week. And on, like I said, the third week, after three or four weeks, I'll give you an updated um, version of this workout so with a few more progressions okay so slightly harder um, by then if you've done it every week you should have got pretty good at it okay so like i said hope you enjoyed it any feedback is welcome whether good or bad i will just use it as a positive criticism um, and see you next time uh, by the way join uh, tune in for our podcast on tuesday me and simon um, every tuesday at 2 15 for the time being while we're in isolation hopefully beyond but certainly while we're in isolation, we're gonna try and spread as much information for you guys as we can, try and keep us going exercise and nutrition wise while we're, while we're stuck at home. Uh, keep up the exercise, keep up the activity, and enjoy the sun. See you later.